aspire to work in government because yeah. what better way to change the world yes. and serve humanity. <laughs> so revival reformation, I, I, I believe in spiritual and all, mm -hmm. and, and that's where it starts, but it should not end there. Hello, and welcome back to the Wyoming Kona podcast. Today, I have a special guest, Yolene, and we had a really special opportunity while we were traveling through Uganda to interview a Supreme Court Justice, Justice Michael. Good morning. Good morning, Yolene. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm okay. Justice Mike, we're so honest. Who has done a bunch of stuff with uh, laws targeting human trafficking and child sacrifice and using, he uses a biblical worldview to, to dismantle these like terrible things and these right. terrible injustices. And we were at this conference with over 200 Christian uh, leaders in government and law uh, and we got to worship with them and, and talk with them and dance with them. It was really fun. But we just got to ask him a little bit about his like burning heart for injustice and how do we see that ended across the nations, across the world. Yes, totally. What stood out to me, we're at this worship gathering with these people from all over the world, and they were like friends coming together. And I remember one of the first questions we asked the Supreme Court Justice, we said, what, what do you, would you say to a younger generation that's burning to see breakthrough in areas of injustice, which when we look at Gen Z, I mean, so many of us are burning to see breakthrough in areas of human trafficking or areas of corruption that are off. So we're just going to watch the clip. So yes. uh, let's, let's go for that. How do we lead in a, a world that's, that's rapidly <coughs> changing, not always mm -hmm. Christian in nature? How would you yeah. say as a Christian <coughs> leader within Uganda, yeah. you're able to stand firm without yes, compromise? Yes. How do you go yes, about yes. that? Okay. Your faith and your profession. Uh, I, I, and this is part of it, you know, uh, getting like-minded people. You know, in the Bible where, was it Prophet Elijah mm. who was saying, uh, here I am alone. Mm. And then the Lord showed him others. Yes. So the, the way the, the devil, I think, tries to isolate us, all the world, yeah. is by th isolating us and wow. making us feel like we are alone. Okay, so we were at this gathering, we're hearing him say that, and what I love what he says here is, surround yourself with like-minded people. Now, I, I think it's so important, with what they were doing as well, is they gathered with people that were all burning for the same injustices. They were seeing, well, if it's happening in Nigeria, if it's happening in Uganda, can we collaborate, come together? Because I don't know about you, when you are isolated in your vision, it's really hard to get it off the ground or even have the courage that change is possible. That sometimes the enemy can lie, be like, you're isolated, you should pity yourself. But if we, like the prophet Elijah, ask God, open our eyes, he's going to show us the people that burn for the same passions that will inspire hope, inspire courage, and actually can lead unto breakthrough. So I thought it was powerful. Yeah, it's just more fun to do it. Too, Way more other fun. People. <laughs> totally. With your friends. That's yes. That's like how we... That's how we're like made to live. Mm, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So important. For our next question, we asked him, how do biblical principles really lead to looking at justice in a way that God does? And how does that really bring an end to some of these injustices? So let's watch that, see what he has to say about this. What would you say? Because I think a lot in, in our generation, yes, uh, Generation yes. Z, that are thinking about human trafficking or child yes, sacrifice yes, and hearing yes, yeah, poverty yeah. and yes, injustices yes, around yes, the world. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, I love what you're how you bring it back to a face, Gabriella, yes, or yes, one yes, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, the Bible says uh, kingdom of God is uh, founded on justice and righteousness. Yeah. So, mm. in a way, you feel like we all need to be... To be <laughs> To, to, so it's not either just or righteous, right. but if you could do both, both justice and together. righteousness, yeah. that is, uh, you are doing what the kingdom of God right. is founded on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think a lot of us feel like we're we're called in some way to see breakthrough in these areas. Like I remember in high school doing a project on human trafficking, yeah. and I just completely broke my heart. And I was yeah. like, I I want to do something about this, but it can be so easy to like not know how to actually do something about it or yeah. feel like you can do something that makes a real difference like how do you think he's like where he is right now like My michael is is he's changing laws mm. to end injustices like how do you go from like i have this like burning passion or i see this injustice to, like actually getting to do yes. stuff that that changes things mm. I think passion can only sustain us this far, like excitement um, about that. I think so many of us could agree that some of these areas are wrong. But 
what happens in Justice Mike's life and what happens with people that are really seeing biblical reformation, I think it's passion that lends on conviction, biblical conviction. So first, I think we need to know that God is more committed, God is more heartbroken by some of these areas, the marginalized, the vulnerable around the world, that God hears their cry more than any of us are moved by them and their stories, God is. And right all the way from Genesis to Revelation, God calls us to care for the widow, the broken, the orphan, the vulnerable. And that actually shows our spirituality. Like, are we moved by these things? So that's the first one. I think secondly, is that we have to understand that every injustice lands in a lie. That there's something on a worldview level that's allowing things to happen. So for example, Justice Mike, he saw child sacrifice in Uganda. Now, actually, this comes from a worldview called animism. A lot of African nations embrace sometimes a mixture of biblical and animistic worldview. They believe there's a demon or a spirit in everything. And so if a parent becomes sick, they believe that they have to offer their child to this spirit so that they might find prosperity or healing. And so they condone child sacrifice because of their worldview. And so if we see in a biblical worldview, God actually protects every human life, we find that this is a contradiction. So just as Mike believed the Bible speaks to all of life, it actually delivers me of lies condoned by other worldviews. So he looked at child sacrifice, believed and understood that God cares for them, that he hears their cry, that he's passionate, that his skill could actually lead to reformation and that God can use a government leader to do that. And thirdly, that there were lies at the core of his society, Uganda, that needed deliverance because truth will deliver people. And so he helped make child sacrifice illegal because a biblical worldview uh, was something that gave him conviction to marry passion with conviction that led to breakthrough. It's like getting God's heart and his compassion and see, right. taking that and turning into real change. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that that compassion and that, that heart of God mm -hmm. leads us to action. 100%. So let's, let's watch the next clip yes. because I think he talks about that. I think so. Having the, the conference being called Advocates International, yeah. what's the, the core definition of advocacy? Advocates, yes, mm. yes, yes. Advocates uh, means uh, basically from our perspective, speaking for other people speaking for us. and especially the voiceless it's amazing because uh, on sunday i was preaching at my former high school oh and yes. uh, the sermon was from proverbs 31 yes. 8 and 9 yeah speak for the voiceless yes and uh, the poor and the oppressed mm -hmm. right and so that's what advocacy means and uh, if you are a lawyer if you are a teacher you are a law enforcement officer, if you're a journalist, yeah. you realize how much power you have right. and how much power to mm. effect positive change yes. and to, you know, highlight yes. the issues that affect people who can't. Understand. Well, I love what he just said. I think his call to really see the ones that no one sees and his, I think, even challenge to us as we're listening, the challenge to really use our voices to speak up for those that don't have a voice and i can only imagine looking at his life the cost that something like that would have paid it's so much easier to just speak up for our own needs speak up for our own life it's it's a real safe way to approach even christianity and there's something and i think it goes into that next uh, about the cost of being willing to be a voice is standing the gap for areas of injustice social issues in our day so why don't we listen see what he has to say about that we are stewards Right. never owners mm. and once you undergo that mind change you are steward not just of the money you get but mm. even your talent mm. even your profession as a lawyer yes personally and this is a mindset of many students when mm. they are leaving law school you want to go and become a big lawyer make a lot of money mm. so i wanted to go to government work for two years then uh, go and set up my practice well, but somehow i found well, myself and uh, i cannot regret yeah really and so i would that. encourage people to mm. young people to aspire to work in government because yeah. what better way to change the world yes. and serve humanity you could even if you try to build your own uh, reputation and all after some time you find that uh, it is kind of a hollow a whole vision, a whole goal after some time. It is not right. fulfilling. And I've, I've talked to very, very senior lawyers yeah. who have been very successful. And eventually mm. they say, yeah, but I think well, it's more fulfilling to try yeah. and help other people. Yeah. Because I, you know, in a way, <laughs> it is uh, two ways. <clears throat> 
it's very diff it, it can be very difficult to become successful and make and accumulate wealth. Yeah. In another way, it is so easy. Yeah. You can do it very quickly. Right. And then you realize, so what else is there to yeah. do? And what? Uh, and yeah. and uh, that can't be your yeah. only goal. Otherwise, no. uh, your sense. life will be very yeah. uh, unfulfilling. Yeah. 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 I, I think worldwide, chief prosecutors or prosecutors, it's a dangerous job. Right. Because you are prosecuting very powerful people, drug wow. drug barons, and they have a lot wow. of money and connections. Terrorists, wow. uh, human traffickers, these are rich, connected people. One day I got a letter from uh, <coughs> head me. of uh, intelligence mm -hmm. and says we have uh, unearthed very credible source that uh, you are, oh, wow. they are trying to kill you. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, and he put it for me in writing. Wow. So I got the letter, and of course, humanly speaking, you get afraid. Yeah. But I remembered there is a passage in the Bible where one of the kings, I think he was Hezekiah. Yes. He got uh, a threat. Yes. And then uh, he went to the Lord alone yes. and said, God, uh, yeah. this is what's happening. Yes. I, yeah. So I remember that as soon as I read that letter and started fearing, I remembered. So I also closed, locked my door. And went and uh, laid wow. that letter before wow. the Lord. I said, my life is, is yours. Wow. So mm. when uh, I'm sure nobody can kill me if you don't want me to die at that time. Mm. And that liberated me. Wow. Yeah. So it was one of those you, you realize wow. your life can go anytime, but yeah. it's not really your life. Yes. Again, you are a steward of that life. Yes. <laughs> I think that is so powerful. Yes. Just his... He wanted to be like a big time lawyer, make a lot of money when he was younger, and, but yes. he realized that there was actually something bigger that he mm -hmm. can be a part of, that that stuff is actually empty and hollow. Wow. Yes. And he actually wanted to make real change and be a part of a bigger like, bigger story, God's story yes. in yes. Uganda. That is so powerful. And even when it got like hard, like he had yeah. people literally trying to kill him. Like yeah. I can't imagine that kind of persecution. But his resolve to find like no, my life is not my own. Like yes. it's it's in God's hands, and I just trust Him. And He's yes. so full of joy and mm -hmm. so happy and so outspoken, even yeah. though He has all these like dangers. He said it's so dangerous to yes. be to be in that position. Yet yes. it didn't like it didn't make him fearful. He right. like stepped through that. Mm -hmm. So so powerful. So powerful. I think we can have like a powerful when we have that re revelation, yes. that realization ourselves that. Oh, yeah. Our lives are not our own. It mm -hmm. liberates us. It's free. Wow. Yeah. So true. And even what, what you said, because I think it's so easy for us to settle for a dream that's according to our comfort, according to what doesn't feel dangerous. But if you look at the Bible, the life that Jesus invited anyone in was both full of adventure, but also the impossible and also the risk. And I think we just can't run away from that. And yet we know that even in the midst of all of that, God is there. And so I feel even watching that here with what you're saying, maybe there's an invitation for us to really let go of our small-minded dreams and to pick up God's adventure, God's dream. Because the more that I see God, I'm like, he's so much more committed to seeing breakthrough in social issues, seeing people reached with the gospel than we ever could. And so I want to listen to the next clip because he gives us a big vision, what he's dreaming of for Africa. And I think it can maybe provoke us to dream God-sized dreams. Yeah, it is good to go to church. We need to go to church. But if we don't impact the life of the poor people, the yeah. needy people, those people you are going to see in the yeah. refugee camp, yeah. I, I think for them what they would want is... Uh, can they go back to their homes? So mm. absence of war. Yeah. In other words, peace. Yeah. But the two are not exclusive because yes. Jesus is the king yes. of peace. Yeah. Amen. And so in a way we have to, to preach this dual gospel yes. about, uh, you know, Jesus is a uh, king of peace. Yeah. And therefore, if you accept him, then you can transform the yeah. lives around you and the, mm -hmm. the, the, the lives of the people around you. Yes. So revival, reformation, I, I, I believe in spiritual and all, mm -hmm. and, and that's where it starts, but it should not end there. Yes. We should see it in the social, in the economic arenas as mm -hmm. well. I love what he's challenging us. I think he's giving us such a clear picture of the kingdom of God, right? You might have been transformed in your own life, set free from things, or really encountered the love of Jesus, and it just cannot stay within the church walls. It has to go out into 
India, into every country in Africa, into Europe, America. And I, I'm looking at the world and even from our travels. We were in Uganda right after this. We did go into northern Uganda, into refugee camps. And we saw and heard stories of people from South Sudan that have fled from war. We traveled to Kenya, Madagascar. I heard stories of how God is moving uh, among the poor, among the hungry. And I, I recognized, wow, the gospel of Jesus will reach the most broken, most hard to reach, most desperate needs all around the world and so I think our question is going to Jesus asking what will it take me to obey you dream a God-sized dream and take that passion for justice into a biblical worldview that it becomes conviction and also becomes a place of trust that God's more committed than we ever could and uh, I'm really going to God what is it going to take me to see your dream come true in my generation what do you think how that's going to look like yeah I I just think of I think of all the things she said and yeah. and trying to I'm trying to just summarize it in my head and mm-hmm. I think of like three kind of like pillars of what he said mm-hmm. the, the first being like get God's heart yeah. for injustices and find yes. other people to have yes. that that share that burning passion mm-hmm. for what for what breaks God's heart yeah and then speak up the second yes. thing would be like take responsibility so like good. use your voice advocate for the mm-hmm. broken use your skills and things that god has given you yes. to see real change happen right and third thing is don't give up like it yeah. like when things hard things happen when persecution comes when um yeah. when, when doubt comes mm-hmm. it's like taking resolve like no god has said these things and he, he yeah. is gonna see me through these things yeah. you know he's gonna get the glory in this and totally um, i just think it's so powerful that mm-hmm. what he got to share with us and yeah. such an opportunity that we got to speak with him and, and be a part yeah. of that. Hey, well, that's all from us for now. We hope that you enjoyed listening. Uh, this has been the Wyoming Kona Podcast. And hey, if you want to listen to more stories of missionaries all across Africa, we did some projects um, going after revival and reformation in these places. So you should click on this right here. It's right. It should be right there. Just click on that and hear real life stories of God moving in this region. Yeah, so please leave a comment if there's an injustice stirring a social issue and God speaking to you, we'd love to hear and uh, hope it encourages you. Yeah. All right.